What's up, everybody? We have 10 minutes today with Rob Morell, who joined us for the Range Finders Everything You Ever Wanted to Know podcast, and we're going to attempt to discuss Parallax in Red Dots. Rob, welcome to the podcast Thanks. again. Yeah. Now, explain for a lot of people when they see Red Dots or holographic sites as well, they see something called Parallax Free. Mm-hmm. And I think you're going to debunk a myth, maybe break some hearts out there uh, about what Parallax Free is. But, yeah, where would you start on that? Well... What even is it? What does it mean that it's parallax-free? So, so parallax is, a, is kind of the apparent shift of a, a target image depending on what angle you're looking at it. Um, and so I don't think there are any chairs around here. You might want to sit down. None of the red dots that are on the market are truly parallax-free. I know, I know. Oh, but don't worry. The knees. It's going to be okay. My whole world's collapsing <laughs> in on itself. Well, I mean... So I'm an engineer by trade, right? So th- from a physics standpoint, they're not parallax-free. But from like a practical use standpoint, effectively, they are um, for all intents and purposes for, for us shooting. So um, really what's happening with, with red dot sites is you've got a, a parabolic lens. Uh, I'll just talk about red dot sites, not about holographic sites. Similar concept um, around parallax, though. But with... Um, with a red dot sight, these three in particular, you have a parabolic lens and you've got a point source emitter that that um, point source is bouncing off the parabolic lens. And the cool thing with the parabolic lens is when light hits it, um, the rays come back and they're all parallel. And so what that, that gives you that effect that that dot is kind of floating out in space on the target, right? Okay. And so you'll see in a lot of marketing, you know, parallax free um, and... Like I said, it's not really parallax free, but really once you get out to about 50 yards or farther, I think you've probably I was seen that say, number. Yeah, parallel, parallax free beyond 50 yards. Right. Yeah. And and you, so it's good to have that. I think we have that qualifier on our on our verbiage. And really, what happens at that point is just from a, geom, uh, a geometry standpoint, a trigonometry standpoint, the angle angular difference gets so small from something you're shooting at um, that it really doesn't. Mm-hmm. It, I mean, what, from a practical standpoint, not that dots are inaccurate, but you know, you, you got a, a one X optic. You just you are you just not even gonna if maybe you were s- you're, you're you're not going to notice and like if uh, the same thing like with a you know precision long range rifle scope. Even if you were being precise with the red dot, though, the actual error that would be occurring is still very small. Right, right. So like, um, let's do a quick calculation here, real quick. Um, and f- real quick, while Rob does this calculation, what we're, what we're referring to when you say that the way that you look through the optic can change the angle and how it looks over top of the target, when you look through a red dot and it's on your gun, you can move your face around, and you're going to see it looks like the red dot dances around inside of the optic. If you're actually really paying attention, though, and you're not moving the, the rifle, this can't really be done handheld. Right. Uh, it's got to be done in, in sort of on a sturdy bench top or something like that. You'll see that the red dot appears to be dancing around in there, but really it's always essentially pointed at the same thing. So that's why with a red dot, they're nice for really quick stuff because you can, you know, be kicking doors like Mark always is talking about. Naturally, yeah. And you can be slightly off of your perfect cheek weld, but still execute a good shot. And that really technically is the case, as has been said, 50 yards and beyond. I'm sure we'll get into it, what happens 50 yards and in, because that's where red dots are used a lot. Yep. Uh, but anyway, you did your calculations yeah, here. So. And so like this, as I was kind of mentioning earlier, um, it's going to depend on kind of where your head position is too. So like, let's take the Spark AR, for example, and with a 20 millimeter objective lens, let's say... Um, that you got a target that's at 25 yards and you've got this mounted up and you're all the way basically off axis so you're not centered up on the dot or on the optical tube here you're all the way basically as far to one side as you can go and you're talking about your head position head eye position your yeah. eye position yeah okay so yeah. you're basically all the way to the edge of where this is usable so you're the furthest off from center that you can be farthest off from center that you can be and with that 50 yard magic parallax free number at 25 yards you're only talking about um 0.197 inches of error. So it's like less than a quarter inch of error um, within tw- at, at 25 yards. So, you know, if you're shooting at a IPSC target or whatever, I mean, you're, you're still hitting the target. It, and, and so it's, it's really, it's not that it's still big. still quite accurately. Super even. accurate. I mean, I know for sure I, I can't hold a group, you know, offhand with, 
with an AR to that, you know, to that level of precision. Um, so it's a really small amount of error that, that you're introducing into it. Um, and that's if your head position, again, is way, way, you know, off to the extreme. Mm -hmm. If you're centered up, really you don't have that uh, happen. So Right, right. Yeah, that's interesting. So, yeah, in the most extreme scenario, still negl negligible yeah. and really from a practical standpoint, it doesn't matter. Right. Yep. And, the, and the reason why it's kind of the case at 50 and beyond, I remember uh, Dave, who's been on before as well, talking to me at one point, you know, let's say quote, these are optimized or whatever, they, the, the dot kind of has this appearance to be out there at 50 yards, or is mm -hmm. that how you would explain it, Rob? Yeah, so I guess the way to think of it from your eye, um, you've got all these different um, rays of light that are coming in, mm -hmm. and just the way that those rays are coming in off of, off of the parabolic lenses I was mentioning, they're all coming off parallel, and as you get out farther than 50 yards, the difference between the, Im the image angle light that's coming and those parallel rays are so small that it, it's really imperceivable to your eye. So that's that's why you might hear per, uh, like optimized for 50 yards. It's not optimized for 50 yards, it's just a physics thing mm -hmm. on, on the differences of the ray angles of the, the light coming back to your eye. And does that go into sort of like what he was saying was imagine that a light post is out there at about 50 yards or something, and then you're looking at another light post that's beyond that one at, say, 100 or 150 yards. Where you're standing, if you start kind of even walking around, if you're still looking down there, that, that first light post at 50 yards is still going to look kind of like it's covering up the back one. But then as you move, if that 50-yard one stays put and you move the other one way up close to you, then as you move around the one that's way up close to you, it definitely, it only looks like it's directly over top of the 50-yard one when you're directly in line. But all of a sudden you start moving around, it's going to appear to be off. Is that kind of the same yeah. it's a, principle? It's a similar, yeah, similar thought there. So, And some people, we know, get red dots. And naturally, what they'll do is they see this parallax-free thing, they bring it home, they pull it out of the box, they're in their reloading room, they're in their, you know, basement gun room, whatever, they pull it out of the box and they set it on a nice sturdy table and they look at a wall that's 10 feet away, maybe. And they start moving their head around and they think that that red dot, even though it looks like it's dancing around, like we said earlier, it should stay on, you know, that hole in the pegboard across the room. Right. Well, because they're really close up and they're in close quarters, they're going to see, oh, wait, actually, no, it is, it's moving around a little bit. And then we've gotten some calls or some messages before where people say, hey, this thing says it's parallax-free, but I'm getting it to exhibit parallax here in my room. And what they don't realize is, you know, that it is essentially, for all intents and purposes, parallax-free, but also that error, again, to what you were saying earlier, Rob, is such a small error. If you kind of get yourself, you kind of look at the the hundred foot or the thousand foot view of what you're actually seeing happen, the amount that it's actually moving or the error, especially in a close quarters environment, like five, 10 feet or so, it's really not that much. Right. In the grand scheme of things, it's moving down there. Maybe, you know, you might get like an MOA of error, but an MOA within 10 feet is right almost nothing. Yeah. And, and again, it goes back to, you've got this image that's now way closer and you've got a much steeper, basically ray angle of light that's coming. So that's also contributing to it. Another thing too is just the lens itself. Um, you might, with something that's that close, you might be seeing other um, optical aberrations like coma or distortion or things like that that might also make it look like that dot's dancing around. And that's just because it's not able to correct an image uh, to make it look accurate when it's that close as well. So mm -hmm. there might be other things going on with the optical system, depending on how it was designed, that's making it look like the dots moving around as you're changing your head position. Um, that might be other than just parallax as well. So Is that kind of where like the holographic sight comes into play, where there's it's not using that lens that you're actually looking through, even though there are uh, essentially many like mirrored surfaces mm -hmm. and things in the actual site, what you're actually seeing through is just like windows. So there's, you get less of that distortion. Yeah. You don't have a curved lens at all. Exactly. So, and, and that's one of the big benefits of like the UH one, for example, is from edge to edge of that image, um, you know, your site picture, because you have no curved surfaces, you don't have any distortion. You don't have any coma. You have no lenses that are correcting for anything from the uh, from an image standpoint or from the target standpoint. Um, so yeah, you that that's a big benefit of having uh, having that o over a parabolic system. Hmm. So, with 17 seconds, what's a coma? Because when I think of it, I think of somebody being in a coma. Yeah. <laughs> 
Um, I'll, I'll say kind of a, an easy way to identify it as you're looking through, like let's say a magnified optic, is if you're seeing kind of the image start to wave, um, like up and down, uh, okay. depending on your head position. That's how it, I won't get into like the physics side of it, but that's how it would manifest itself or how you would see it as you're looking through a, a, a scope. People, a lot of people call that distortion, um, which isn't technically correct. I mean, it's the image is appearing distorted, um, but distortion is actually an inconsistent magnification throughout the field of view. So, you know, on, on some red dots or some magnified optics, for example, once you get all the way out to the edge of the field of view, you might see something that looks like one and a half times bigger or uh, uh, okay. 1.3 times bigger than what it would on center. So that would be distortion, um, whereas coma is actually kind of the, you kind of see the image flexing or waving a little bit. Interesting. Yeah. Well, there's a little bonus content for you folks who listen in for 10 minutes. We got that extra 30 seconds of just straight coma knowledge. Yeah. Rob, thanks for joining us. If you have any other questions about parallax and the nature of parallax free and red dots and whether or not it's something you should be worried about with your red dot, it's not, so you don't even have to ask. But feel free to ask. Yeah. We're always happy to. Thanks again for listening, everybody. Have a good one. Bye. Thanks. Bye. Do you feel we explained it well? Did I screw you up with my light post analogy? No, I don't think so. I mean, I, th I think it was probably fine for the intents and purposes of people wanting to know more about it um, as it relates to red dots and why they shouldn't be worried about it. So if you guys don't feel like it went well, we can rerun it. Um, or if you want to bring somebody else on to you to talk more about fine. it. Okay. Brittany and Ryan, what did you guys think? Big words were being said, but just as far as somebody who's interested in learning about something, they'd be like, oh, that's pretty neat. I think the bottom line, people get that they're not exactly parallax-free, and it doesn't matter. Yeah, brilliant. Huh. Yeah, and we, we got it. Could, I was going to just sold it down to a 30-second podcast. <laughs> I, was, I, was watching, uh, I was watching the clock there, Jim, and I was like, coma, coma, coma. And I, I was, I, you really, at, when you started, I was going to go, Jim, do you think we've got time to tell the folks what coma, and then you're like, <laughs> So it worked out good. Yeah, sweet. Thanks, Rob. Yeah, you got it.